Hello fellow fish nerds and happy Fry Friday to you. I know I did not post a Water Change Wednesday video this week because it has been a long, short week. This week I planned on recording the video of my second dosing of a Levamisol for the Camelanus worms in most of my classroom fish tanks. But, Sunday my daughter started rubbing her eyes and eyes started getting red and had this gooky stuff in her eyes when she woke up from her nap so doctor's office was closed had to take her to the doctor on Monday had to put an enforced sub for that brought her into the doctor he checked out her eyes listened to her heart listened to her breathing pres prescribed the eye drops we were good to go thinking she'd be able to go back to preschool on Tuesday not so much she wakes up Tuesday morning, 5 in the morning, complaining about her ears hurting, tugging at her ears. My wife asked me, did the doctor check her ears? I said, no, he didn't check her ears or her nose or her throat. So, great, I gotta put in for a sub again. Last minute. Put in for a sub, go in early, make some sub plans, take a dot daughter to the doctor, Doctor checks out her ears, and sure enough, she's at the beginning part of an ear infection. Prescribes the medicine, we're good to go. Wednesday, on the second day of spring, we get a snow day. I know you people in Canada probably used that, you're like, so what, big deal. Well, in Virginia, that's not completely normal, although it is normal to have four seasons in like one week here. You don't like the weather? Wait 15 minutes, it'll change. So I had a snow day yesterday. So finally, was able to go in for my first day of the work week today. The day of recording, Thursday. This being a two hour delay day, I had a shortened time. Finally, after the school day was over, I was able to start dosing my tanks with the uh, Levamisol, doing the water changes, etc. Didn't get to all of them. So I got a little bit of video of that, a little bit of explanation of what was going on, showing you the water changes. As exciting as that is, I know. And uh, so that will hopefully make up for the lack of water change Wednesday because I did some water changes on Thursday and dosed with the 0.3 grams per 10 gallons of uh, Levamisol. So then, uh, I go in this morning really excited because I had a feeling that my Epistogramma cockatotis orange flash fry had become free swimming and were out on their little fry parade. Go in, look at my 20 gallon long tank and sure enough there are about 25 or 30 or so based on my best estimates, fry swimming around. Beneath the mother on the plants, I'm like great, they're free swimming. I fed them, I gave them some uh, microworms and some crushed up food, and they seem to take it pretty easily, pretty nicely. So I do have some fry footage for Fry Friday video. Then I come home and I look at my bottom 10 gallon Epistogram Cockatotis orange flash tank, and sure enough, those fry were also in the very beginning stages of being free swimming. Check out this tank behind me. I look closely, look in the cave, which you see right here is actually where, well, we're depending on the angle of the corner of the glass. There's only one cave, I know, it's an optical illusion. And uh, the fry in there, as you'll see later on in the video, are wigglers. They should be free swimming probably when this video comes out, or Saturday. So this video is a combination of Water Change Wednesday for dosing the Levamisol for the camel anus worms, and then Fry Friday video showing you the update on uh, the fry and how they're pro progressing and growing, and my updated fry tank, and I'm hoping that this increases my fry survival rate because so far I have not had very much luck. And I know, so what I'm gonna try in this tank as another experiment, this tank behind me, because they don't breed as often, uh, I'm gonna leave the fry in there to do an experiment to see, hey, how well can these parents really take care of their fry? 
because the bottom tank, which is off the screen, it's down here, the bottom 10 gallon orange flash of pisto tank, those parents, every time they breed, they eat their old fry, which I know is normal, so I'm not really that angry because in the wild, the fry would be able to swim away, go somewhere else down the river, and be able to start their life on their own. Well, in here, they're enclosed. I have a huge, like this big, of a portion of java moss in there. So they should be able to hide. But I guess they're not. So every time I see them free, free swimming, I give them a little bit of time, and I put them into a fry enclosure. Well, previously, I kept the fry in a small shoebox, plastic Rubbermaid shoebox about this tall by about this wide. It's about a foot or so, you know, a shoebox. And the water parameters changed so much, water quality spiked, I'm pretty sure that was what killed the fry. So, I did some, as Mr. B's from Mr. B's Aquatic, I think is the name of his channel, said on my live stream on Monday night, he said, oh, so you're playing musical fish tanks. Yes, I'm playing musical fish. So I swapped some fish around, was able to free up a 10 gallon. I'm gonna keep the fry in that. Hopefully that will increase my fry survival rate. Um, that will have lo lower water quality spikes, ups and downs, and I will be able to uh, make small water changes clean at the bottom of it and it won't make as much of a negative impact on the fry as having such a small shoebox. I'm hoping that increases my fry survival rate. Um, so we'll see, keep our fingers crossed. Like I said, in this tank right here with the orange flash of pistos, they don't breed that often unless I make them spawn by doing a very large water change. So I'm going to see if they can keep their fry alive and see how uh, compare, do an experiment of the effect of uh, fry enclosure, I guess you would say, on uh, fry survival rate. In this case being the keeping them with the parents, that case keeping them in a separate tank, a fry grow out tank, and that's about it. I, I guess you would call each fry a trial. A frial. It's not a word. It's a bad joke. So, anyways, enough rambling on, enough explaining uh, you probably just want to get to the video the footage um, so I without further ado I do want to say thank you to V-Boy uh, finally the first person to uh, send me their version of my intro theme song uh, I'll post a link to his channel uh, during that uh, so you also go check him out he doesn't have any uh, content yet but I am trying to push him and persuade him into posting more, uh, or actually posting uh, content. Uh, it's kind of my secret evil plan is to get people to post more content so I can watch some more stuff. And uh, so anyways, that's my plan, so just go check him out. And if you want to have your version posted, all you have to do is email me as an attachment, email me your video, whatever, recording of your version of my intro theme song to Mr. Science Geek Channel at gmail.com. Now, he just recorded it on his phone. I got the video out of the email. I separated the audio. I basically trashed the video part of it and I kept the audio. Now, his version's better than mine. You know why? Because I'm tired of hearing my voice just like I'm sure you are. So, you think you can do better? Send me your version. Send me your band singing it. Send me you playing it on the guitar, piano, harpsichord, harpsichord, whatever. Ukulele, that'd be great. Flute, harmonica. I don't know how you can just play a harmonica and a flute and sing at the same time. But if you figure that out, let me know. And I'll give you a link to your channel down below in the top right. And if you have your band is on iTunes, I'll post a link to that as well. Um, just to give you all a heads up, um, working on getting some original music content. Hopefully, fingers crossed, that will work out. been talking to a friend I've known since I was 11, so trying to get that going. And uh, that way, it'll be a way to support local uh, musicians and my friend's music. 
Will I be able to add that to my channel? Uh, we'll see how it goes. Actually, I need to talk to him because he said that he would talk to him his, the rest of his band on Tuesday. So, be sure to be listening out for that. Thank you, V-Boy, for your uh, submission of my intro theme song. And once again, if you all want to submit your own version of it, then just email it to MrScienceGeekChannel at gmail.com. Without further ado, here we go. It's Mr. Science Geek. I hope my things don't leak. If it's information that you seek, then at my videos take a peek. Be sure to tune in each week. My singing, my jokes really reek. Here's the water change Wednesday portion of this week's video. And you see here I am adding water to uh, one of my tanks. And here's the blonde guppy tank, which I've done a 50% water change in. Took out half the old water. Uh, I will then be adding the 0.3 grams of uh, Levamisol to the tank and adding it with new water. This is the Panda Guppy tank, which you see here, which has already had the 50% water change and the dosing of the uh, Levamisol. You'll notice the lights are on, I know. Uh, that was just for the filming. After I did the uh, recording of the video, I did turn the lights off. Here I am adding the water back to the Blonde Guppy tank. And if you notice, uh, I don't, you, you won't see any of the camel anus worms hanging out. The red solo cup down on the bottom right of the screen is where I would mix the uh, tank water with the 0.3 grams of uh, Levamisol and then pour that in the tank and rinse it out a little bit to make sure that the full dosing gets into the tank. Um, and of course, when I'm adding new water, I do add the uh, prime to make it safe for fish. Here's the Fry Friday portion you might notice here, right beneath the female's mouth and uh, pectoral fins right now uh, are the fry. It's about 25 or so of them. Pretty excited. They aren't very active right now. That might be because the lights have been on for so long or because they haven't gotten much food. Uh, I did just see them today. They might have been in there for about 24 hours before I noticed them. But uh, hopefully my experiment will be a success. The uh, shot you're seeing right now with the light turned on is the uh, wiggler stage of the other orange flash of pistos. Um, you see the mother is gathering them up to bring them to a safer, more secluded portion of her cave. I suspect they will become free swimming in the next few days. Uh, this is the pair that I'm once again going to leave the fry in there to see the success rate uh, with parental care. And here you see some fry. There's one fry towards the bottom middle of the screen that is uh, pretty easily visible. Actually, there's two now that I look closely. Uh, but anyways, we'll see how this does. You'll see some uh, microworms swimming around if you look closely in the background. Lots of movement. Uh, hope you found this video enjoyable, informative, or edutaining. Uh, please be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and check out my links below. Stay tuned and stay fishy, people. Bye.